Hello, I'm Virginia Trioli and I'm your host for this very special event, which is to celebrate, acknowledge and give our thanks to David McAllister, the much loved artistic director of the Australian Ballet, as he finishes up with us and is about to embark on new adventures and challenges. We had many events planned to honour David throughout 2020, but as you know, COVID-19 and the pandemic got in the way, so this has not been possible. But as they say in the business, the show must go on. So here we are online to pay tribute to David and to celebrate his journey of artistic discovery, excellence and devotion. David's journey in dance with the Australian Ballet spans some 38 years. He joined the company in 1983 as a young corps de ballet dancer and rose up the ranks to become principal artist in 1989. In 2001, just after his retirement from the stage, he was appointed artistic director and for the next two decades, he pursued his artistic vision for the company with all the panache and the energy that he was known for during his performing years. This is a story of family support, professional and personal relationships, artistic triumphs and self-discovery. But most of all, it's about an authentic love of dance. David has always been a positive force within the company and across the dance community worldwide. I'm sure you'll enjoy chapter one of David's story as he explores and grows into his life in dance. I guess David and his dancing started through a television set. The old pie black and white telly we had used to have a glass front protecting the tube. And when you were watching the telly, of course you didn't notice the, the glass screen, but when you turned it off, it more or less became like a mirror. So when they turned it off, off he'd go, like you wound him up and away he'd go on all the go-go and all the things that he'd seen on the telly. And Olive knew something was inside him that was about to burst. She sort of said to him one day, would you like to learn to dance? And he said, oh yeah. She said, what would you like to learn? And he said, I want to learn ballet. Now that to me is an eternal mystery because basically He'd never, as far as I'm aware, had much to do, if anything at all, to do with ballet. So where it came from, it's just one life's mysteries. Over the summer holidays, David would put together a pantomime. He would make a set and there would be a curtain. He even got it right down to when mum and dad would come to watch the production, what snacks they would eat while they were, <laughs> while they were enjoying the show. I think it gave him an outlet. He'd found all his artistic energy once he found ballet. In 1982, Stephen Heathcote and myself had another year to go at the school before graduation. And Dame Margaret Scott said to both Stephen and myself, you need to be at the ballet centre tomorrow morning. And um, we said, sort of like, Stephen Margaret. And so we arrived there and it was the day that all the third years were having their interviews with the company. And we were like, oh, I wonder what we're all doing here. So I went into my interview, as it turned out, with, with Dame Margaret and with Marilyn Rowe. And she said, next year the company is doing Spartacus. We need a lot of men, and so you're going to be seconded into the company for the first three months um, to do that ballet. And then you'll get sent back to the ballet school and you'll continue your studies. I was absolutely petrified. To be in a classroom that Marilyn Rowe was, you know, taking class and all these great sort of like stars of the company at the time. I was really excited. And Mani Gilgood arrived. She'd been just appointed as the new artistic director. And first month went, second month went, we did Spartacus, and then the third month came, and then the fourth month, and the fifth month, and we kept on getting cast and stuff. And I remember saying to Steve, we're supposed to be going back to the school, and they're not said anything yet, so we just never said anything either. Even in rehearsal, you could see that he just loved to dance. And that's a gift that not many students or, or some students have and then they lose later as dancers. But he kept that throughout his career. And that with the energy, the technique, um, the flair, uh, made him an obvious with Elizabeth Tui to, uh, to go to the Moscow competition. Um, that was a really exciting. 
The only regret I have is that I couldn't go because I had to stay with the company. In this room are some of the better known and most talented dancers this country has. But two have become special. Their names are Elizabeth Tui and David McAllister. They danced in a big ballet competition in Russia last year and won a medal. So now they've been invited back to dance in Don Quixote with the most famous ballet company in the world, the Bolshoi. I think it was Bain sort of perceiving because I was all around the world and then suddenly people were talking about David. He slipped in in a way because I remember seeing some of the performances with the Australian Ballet doing sort of minor roles, but you did look at him. You definitely looked at him. He's a dancer that works as much on the physicality as he does on the emotion aspects of dance, and that's what I'm absolutely, I loved. That was a full package, somebody who could actually transform himself. There were things about David that you thought, oh, he won't be suited to that role. And then you saw him in it, and suddenly he felt he was perfectly suited to that role and he always bought something fresh. Roles like Nutcracker, where he started really as um, the cavalier to the principal, it wasn't the main role, but suddenly there was a character that he wore that costume like he'd worn it all his life. He joined the company in 1983 as a corps de ballet dancer. He became a coryphee in 1984, soloist in 85, and then he was made a senior artist, then a principal dancer. To get from that senior artist to principal, he had to really, he had to fight. It wasn't just handed to him. He was so kind and generous to his partners that you could see that it was a relationship that was, um, well, real. He was the easiest person to work with. We never had one single fight <laughs> the whole time. Not a disagreement and we just clicked. He was my ballet husband for 10 years. Today, the Australian Ballet announced that one of their own dancers, David McAllister, would take over the coveted role of artistic director. The reaction was a mixture of surprise and delight. Well, I decided when I went for the interviews that, I mean, I had to be myself. I couldn't try and be someone, I couldn't try and be an artistic director, you know. And because they all knew me so intimately anyway, I just went in there and said what I felt about the company, what I felt about its future. and and was just myself and I uh, thought if they wanted me they'd give me the job and they did. After 19 years of dancing his way into the affections of the ballet loving public, David McAllister is about to face his last audience. Among his new family, childhood friend and now prima ballerina Miranda Coney. Their partners in Giselle for his final performance. He's got a love and a passion for what he does and that rubs off on you um, and so, you know, it's a very, very special experience. I feel very honoured to be dancing with him tonight. It's the most amazing feeling. It's, it's something that you just can't imagine until you're there. And, um, and I suppose, in a way, that's the thing I'm going to miss. It's such a drug, you know, it's such a drug. You love it. I hope you're enjoying this very special tribute to David McAllister, the beloved artistic director of the Australian Ballet. In chapter one of David's story, his success as a dancer was well earned, all encompassing and a joy to watch. Now in chapter two, you'll experience some of the wonderful milestones that David has achieved, such as the company's 40th and 50th anniversaries and the introduction of 19 new full length ballets, including Graham Murphy's majestic Swan Lake, and seminal works by world-renowned choreographers such as Wayne McGregor, Alexei Ratmansky, John Neumeyer, Christopher Wielden, Stephen Page, and the company's resident choreographers, Stephen Baines, Stanton Welch, 
Tim Harbour and Alice Top. And of course, we can't leave out David's own lavish new production of The Sleeping Beauty. So many highlights that brought much joy and entertainment to Australian and overseas audiences. And of course, gave the dancers of the Australian Ballet the opportunity to soar. Enjoy. Thank you. Marilyn Jones commissioned Beyond 12. And I was lucky enough as a young dancer to work with Kelvin in this ballet. I started off as the youth and I grew up into the adolescent. And now I feel very much like the adult in my new role as artistic director. Each of the artistic directors have had the unique difficulty of balancing the contemporary and the classical repertoire. I was lucky enough to work with Maynard Gielgud and Ross Stretton, and they both had a great way of achieving this. The invitation that came first was early in his relationship as artistic director. It was probably the first commission. And it was a commission that I thought I would never get. I had at one point, when asked by the Australian Ballet what was a work that I'd like to do, I said Swan Lake. There was a bit of a strange response to that, basically because I was known as a contemporary choreographer and I had never done full-length classical work. When I presented concept, he was enthused, alive, involved, and when I was creating the work, his presence was there. And I loved that because it indicated that he was just charged with the energy that he brings absolutely everything he does. David has always been about the team and building a team and a team culture right across the organisation. Often when pushed from elsewhere to identify the stars and the, David once said in a meeting and this has stuck with me and he said it really early on and it's one of the things that I loved about him that the company is the star and that's not always the case in ballet companies or in other arts companies and whilst of course we have a range of stars and at all levels of the company people who excel in their areas of expertise be they dancers or musicians or uh, wardrobe creators or designers um, it's what he really aimed to do and has built across many 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 years and it will be a lasting legacy is this idea of the whole company as a team and the company as the star. And the Ballet Russe, that Diaghilev company, is the company that changed the course of Western art. It changed the course of ballet. We wouldn't have uh, abstract ballets and the ideas of triple bill and the development of ballet as a response to music or to as an abstract concept. So we were exploring marking the centenary in ways that would celebrate that and really point to that history. As we know, that's our part of the motto of the company, uh, caring for tradition and daring to be different. How do we meet that with this project? That, that motto actually encapsulates everything about the Ballerus project. So celebrating the great works, restaging works like Scheherazade, uh, restaging works like Apollo, uh, which had its you know, origins through the Ballet Russe, uh, exploring the concept of symphonic ballet, so restaging something like Les Presages, uh, but making it really particularly relevant to the Australian story. It's hard to believe that the company has been going for 50 years. It's really amazing how far they've come. We're all here today, obviously, to celebrate the very big milestone of our company. Today is an exciting day uh, to celebrate for everyone because it's the company's 50th birthday. When the artistic directors from the past came out. For me, that was the most memorable moment. They've been able to cultivate and grow the company and to be part of that history. I definitely will hold that moment with me for the rest of my life. Through his, um, 
his demeanour, his his uh, his attitude, his his positive attitude, his calm attitude, and his inclusive, very inclusive attitude. The company feels nurtured and supported. He's put in a number of initiatives, like in terms of the well-being of the dancers, the medical team is second to none. Uh, obviously, we've had the amazing um, refurbishment of the centre in his under his time. Um, so. It's a company of very well looked after dancers and I think they know that, they appreciate that. I think from in the point of view of tangible artistic achievements there are a number and I think first of all uh, maintaining a very diverse repertoire and extending that repertoire both in classical and contemporary work which has always been the charter of the company, he's maintained that. The great works of, of um, Balanchine, Macmillan, uh, Cranko, Ashton, and, and the, the Petipa classics. Um, there's an enormous amount of uh, contemporary work that's been brought. All the major contemporary choreographers of the world have, have been represented and, and most of it has been done since he's been here. We have Wayne McGregor and Christopher Wilden and Alexei Rachmansky, all of those works. And I think a, a very significant initiative was the body talk thing because that um, has produced, I mean, I didn't come through a, a thing like that, but um, Tim Harbour and Alice Top certainly have. He's actually very astute, David. You know, he's quite humble but actually he's, he's very sensitive to the art form, but he also, he also, you know, he wants to put on a show. He's a showman, David, and um, he strikes a beautiful balance with that. And that's something that I really want to strike with my choreography too. So I really prick up my ears to anything he might say, what's working, what could be better. And he's, he do, he's done more and more of that as time's passed. I think now um, I really understand how challenging it is to make room for new choreography, especially new local choreography in this company. And I appreciate now the efforts that he has gone to to keep things like body talk going and to sort of just stick his fingers into the belly, you know, the muscle fibre of this company, wrench it apart to make that space for new choreography, new local choreography. I remember when David first told me that the company were awarded the Rudolf Nureyev Prize for New Dance and that he was going to put it towards Aurum because um, it had to be a new work. It wasn't a pre-existing work, it had to be a brand new piece of dance. The beautiful part about the process was that when it, we all came together, it was just us, we were a little team. Out of that, Aurum was developed. To be able to create that work with, with the support of, of that, that prize and, and to share that with New York and then to do it in Sydney and Melbourne and, and now in New Zealand as well, it's, yeah, it's a pinch me moment. People who visit Australia and, and watch our shows or guest um, always reflect on and, and respond to our warmth um, our care for each other, our support for each other, and, and that's been instilled from David. That's, that's the greatest gift. Warramuk means in the dark night, and it's a Yungal word from northeast Arnhem Land. I really wanted to bring that sort of indigenous theatrical contemporary storytelling and flavour to the ballet from that Bangara perspective. I just felt it was a, a, a perfect story. Around 2008, we, they were putting together an international tour of going to the Chatelet in Paris and Saddles Wells in London, and he wanted to do right, and then Graham had Swan Lake, and it was just this rich storytelling from down under. And um, how ambitious was he to, to strive to take these works and these stories, um, and quite the diverse stories that really reflect who we are, as Australians, so um, he's um, 
him curating that and having that passion to to uproot those stories and take them overseas was um, yeah I really admire that in him. Sleeping Beauty has always been an extraordinarily big work. Um, even back in 1890 when it was premiered, it was just, it was so extraordinary with this amazing amount of people on stage, this huge design impact and of course that great Tchaikovsky score. So it's a lavish and big work and that's exactly what we wanted to make when we did this production in 2015. The wonderful thing about Sleeping Beauty is it's, it's so multi-layered. Um, there's so many um, parts of the story and there's so many ways of telling the story. For the children it's all about the storybook characters and the fairies and all of that magical world. But for the adults there's all the other sort of more adult themes. So it's, it's a great ballet for the whole family. One thing that um, really warmed my heart was um, almost every day when I was, I was choreographing in the studio, he was sitting on the floor, um, you know, by my side. And, you know, directors don't do that. He was like so much part of the process and um, I sense that that's the, the key to his success. He's so involved in everything he does. Thing in the ballet is, is certainly not that. The ballet is not a documentary of Mijinsky. It's basically an inward landscape of his soul, uh, told through through memories and through feelings and desires. You and and that I think is the question with with David McAllister. That in knowing him over the years, I came to trust him to be someone that was truly, truly sincerely interested in this work and truly, sincerely interested in, in making it possible in, in any way there was, and in also in, a, in not a selfish way, but in a way that could possibly benefit his dancers to have the, the, this experience of, of doing this work. It was just a really a joyous experience recreating it there, fine tuning, um, really I, I think outside of the original production, probably the most successful production of Alice that we've had. You know, he sort of set the tone for the working environment of the Australian Ballet that way too. And of course as, as a director who has been a dancer, you have an understanding of that. Similarly for me as a choreographer, I know what it's like to be up there. So if you can keep the mood um, playful and light as much as possible, then you actually get more out of your dancers. I've worked with him five times, I think it is, in, in various capacities as dramaturg, choreographer, uh, uh, and dancer. Uh, he, he commissioned um, me to create for Body Talk and then uh, I created two educational pieces uh, and then I assisted him or I was dramaturg on his production of Sleeping Beauty and so I was there to uh, offer him advice when he needed it uh, and then that led to the Spartacus Commission and in all of those uh, appointments his door was always open I could always approach him and ask a question whether it be work related or not he always gave me his time and patience and respect. David is a real collaborator, you know, he's, he's an artistic director that listens and he's an artistic director that also provokes and engages you to do things. He's, he's an artistic director also who wants to hear about the idea. For, for Dyad, he was in the rehearsal process with me, you know, he, he, he was there in the studio, he saw the development of that work, 
Um, and since then, he's done some amazing things. You know, he's cast ballets for me. Um, he's re rechanged dancers because he knows the dancers so well, knows the choreographic language so well, knows how to um, recalibrate that. Um, but he's very open and, and very questing. And that's a really fantastic thing because you feel that you can you can come to the company with quite an out, out there idea and he really wants to find a way to make it happen. He's been the longest artistic director of the Australian Dyes history and I think that that in itself is an enormous legacy. I think the company's grown in size, uh, the building has, has redeveloped, um, the international touring has really grown. I think all those things are things that are, are legacy building, but I think the stability of that long-term directorship and someone who came through the school, into the company, into the director, uh, he kept that heritage and I think that that's really important for an organisation and especially a national organisation. The Australian Ballet is responsible for being Australia's um, gateway to ballet and uh, I think David really held that torch and held it for a long time and certainly only made friends. I don't know of anyone who or any kind of uh, negative that way. So I think that that's truly a legacy. I, I bet you there are many facets to that, but that's what I sit back and look at and I think, wow, to, to survive <laughs> this long and to be successful for that long and to have the company out there in all these different countries and the dancers, I think, are now 77 dancers and brand new studio upstairs and yeah, that, that's, that's a legacy. So here we are for the final chapter to give thanks to and to properly farewell David McAllister. There's no doubt, as we've seen from all the comments of various luminaries in chapter two, that David's achievements have been significant. And as he prepares to vacate the office of artistic director, David can reflect on a job incredibly well done. The repertoire that he's built, the world-class medical care and facilities enjoyed by all the dancers, the local and international success that the company's enjoyed during his tenure. He's engaged so many in the community and made dance more accessible to people around the nation on and off the stage. All of these achievements are but a small part of David's legacy. David, congratulations on your outstanding contribution to the Australian Ballet and to the art form itself. You are very much appreciated, admired and held in great affection and esteem by so many. So thank you. David McAllister, what can I say? I joined the Australian Ballet over seven and a half years ago now because I wanted to work with you, one of Australia's foremost and most celebrated cultural leaders. I knew a lot about you because I'd worked at the Australia Council before I joined the Australian Ballet and I knew about your achievements not just as a dancer but more importantly for me as an artistic director. David, you'd already achieved so much when I joined the company. You'd achieved so much in support of our dancers, their development as professionals and also supporting them through our dancer health program. The time and effort that you put into making sure that we had a maternity leave policy that enabled the women in the company uh, to return and complete their careers after having a family. The work that you did with Australian and continue to do with Australian choreographers, showcasing them through the programming and the new commissions that you created and also developing the choreographers of the future through the Body Talk program. I was also hugely impressed with your thoughtfulness as a leader, your interest in how companies work, how to make them sustainable, how to balance the needs of artistic against sustainability. I'm so proud of what you've achieved at the Australian Ballet. As an artistic director, the fact that we have undertaken so many interesting and celebratory, successful international tours, that we've worked with so many fascinating choreographers, Australian and international, to bring exciting new productions to Australian stages. The fact that we have provided a much better environment for our dancers through the redevelopment of the Primrose Potter Australian Ballet Centre, and the fact that we continue to reach out to develop new audiences, whether that's kids through our Storytime Ballet, that's a relatively new initiative and under your watch, or the education program, 
that reaches over 20,000 kids in schools around Australia each year that you've supported so passionately. And also, of course, our regional tour. It's been such fun to be with you on regional tours as we reach out to people in so many regional communities around Australia who welcome us into their communities and sometimes even into their homes and all know and recognise and love David McAllister. Thank you, David. It's been wonderful working with you. I'll never forget this experience. And as you would say, it's been a joy. So without a doubt, we are world leaders in looking after the health and wellbeing of dancers. And that's really due to David's leadership. And when I go overseas, the comments that I get from all the health professionals in other companies is, you are so lucky to have David as your director because it's very rare to get that kind of support to be able to develop the program that we've got today. I don't think there's another artistic director in the country that's had almost 20 years running uh, an organisation of this size. And what he's done is look at also the makeup, the cultural diversity of the people who are on stage at the Australian Ballet. There's something about his embracing of all of Australia that is really at the core of what the Australian Ballet is. And there's something too about uh, a sense of loyalty. His loyalty to the company, to the artists, is something that it is, I don't know, it, it's a very rare thing to see uh, an artist uh, of such singularity, of such kind of thoughtfulness for a company that's in his DNA, and that he's also helped shift it, that it isn't just about what it was 50 years ago, it's about what he could actually assist to make and help it change. Last year, um, 2019, I made a ballet called Chairman Dancers that was going to New York on with, for the Australian Ballet's tour to New York. And normally what would happen is that you'd have, a, a choreographer would have a, someone from the ballet staff to assist them in the studio. But because it was such a busy time, all of the ballet staff were busy with working on other things. And I was okay to go solo, but David volunteered himself. So here I was working with the busiest person in the Australian ballet. It was making time each day or each, every other day to come in and assist me in the studio. And he was absolutely fantastic. I mean, he was amazing. You know, he, he learned all the counts of this very difficult John Adams music that I was working with. Um, he pressed play, he pressed pause on the music recording that we were using and cued it all up. You know, he worked with dancers on the side while I was working with other dancers. I'll, I'll really treasure that memory and how he was, because that was David. That's what he's like. He's just, he's full of love. David has been very, um supportive of my journey, my whole career, um, and he's very generously allowed me to graciously tiptoe between two worlds um, to dance for both the Australian Ballet and for Bangara Dance Theatre because he understands how important that is for me and uh, this is definitely a huge um, yeah, it's been, it's been a huge impact that he's had on me and my career and I'm very, very grateful for all that he's done for me. When I got into work, David said, no Vic, we're doing it together tonight. <laughs> and we had one hour on stage and there are five pas de deux in Manon, five really difficult pas de deux in Manon. And so we had our one hour on stage and I think maybe we got through all of them, but we literally had to throw our hands up and go, oh well, we just have to wait and see. We can't do any more. And it was literally that. But the, the fondest memory is the first thing, the first part of do, you sit on a chair and then he offers his hand and you place your hand on his and you bore and you start. That's the first part of do. And it was such a weird feeling. I can't describe it really, but he put out his hand and the moment I placed my hand on his, I just knew it was gonna be okay. It was like, I just relaxed and went, this is gonna be fine. And you know what, it was. The whole, per whole performance was fine. Not, I don't think anything went wrong. So it was really weird. It was like someone was shining down on us that night. <laughs> but that's a really fond memory for me. The first words that come to my mind are kind, generous and caring. And that's what he's been to me ever since he bowled up the first day in prompt corner to see who this new stage manager was. David is one of the only dancers that um, crew in 
all the theatres in Australia absolutely know by name and still ask me, how's David? You know, because he was always so friendly to everybody on, on, on stage. Um, yeah, so yeah, everyone asked me, how's David going? And I'm talking from mix to lighting to sound, wardrobe. It's much loved. Mm. But they, because they felt like they were part of him on stage. He made them feel like they were part of the, everyone, everyone was important. Everyone was part of the process. There's David who does my iron, comes over and says, you got any ironing? And just starts doing it. Excellent. <laughs> mm. David and, and, and Lizzie bought the house down doing the, um, in, at Covent Garden, doing the Bluebird, which I know is a terribly hard thing to de do. And sometimes you see those sort of things and there's a sort of a look of anxiety, will I get through it or not? David just swept through it, you know. He was wonderful. Um, then, of course, when we were in Russia, at the, I think it was the, um, it was the last dress rehearsal of Romeo and Juliet. He hurt his leg, he mm -hmm. forget what it was, he split the li ligament or something. And I remember saying to him, what on earth are you going to do with all the time? That you, you can't dance. And he said, I'm going to do a business course. And I think that was always stuck in my mind. David and I really began kind of, you know, he and his role as artistic director and me as executive director, very close together. And so we really grew up in the company in our new roles together. So very much it was about charting the course. We spent a lot of time talking about what we wanted to do with the company. We talked a lot about choreographic development. We talked a lot about taking work overseas and really kind of showing the company off. But most of all, David and I just really had a lot of fun. David taught me Giselle in my kitchen very late at night. He wouldn't let me do the lifts. And I had, I, he did all the parts and I kind of filled in. It was a famous night. I've never, I can't look at Giselle the same way again. No. <laughs> so as David prepares for a new life beyond the Australian Ballet, though I suspect the connection will be forever, I would say to him, enjoy every new adventure that you come across. Bring the same energy that you brought for the last 20 years to whatever you do. Leave some space for your own wonderful adventures that might not include the arts even, but enjoy, just enjoy the magic of creativity, remembering that you have left a legacy that is so solid and so beautiful and so ongoing. Well, massive congratulations, David. You know, it's an amazing achievement to be a director of a company for so long and to have brought into the company amazing rep and actually been a, a safeguard to the heritage rep, which is really important. To have a, a group of dancers that love and respect you and that feel that they can come and talk to you and that you've, you've, you've kind of led the way to having kind of an open door policy, which is really, really important. Um, and beyond that, just to say, you know, this is not the end. I'm sure your creative energy and your creative bones are going to go into lots of new adventures. And we want to wish you all of the luck in, in the world. You deserve it. And we can't wait to see what you do next. So I'd like to say to David, well, he's naughty, David, because uh, I'll be 30 years next year at Bengara. And I said he had to do longer than 30 years. So, um, but he, um, look, I would just hope that he continues to to be hungry for for learning and knowledge and I think David's gonna have a, a wonderful career beyond the ballet um, being someone that carries knowledge and, and and cares for stories hello David um, just from on behalf of us at the Australian Ballet the technical and production department all of the crews around the country and I'd like to say thanks and um, and Bon voyage. Uh, I asked my crew um, yesterday what is the sort of lingering thing that we think uh, of you and uh, what came back really loud and clear was trust, the, the fact that you trust us to get our shows on and uh, work really hard to, um, to make the productions work. And one of the things that I remember very clearly is uh, how clear and uh, 
impeccably mannered you are at, production, at the production desk. Uh, and that's really great. And we've never had to clean up after you. Uh, so thanks very much. Um, have a great time and um, we'll see you soon. David, from the bottom of my heart, I want to say congratulations. How amazing. You've been 20 years as director of the Australian Ballet. You've done such a brilliant job, not only as director, but really for ballet worldwide. You're the director everybody wants to be like. And we've all learned from you. And I'm so grateful to call you my friend, somebody that I can phone up any time and ask advice. And I think we've had that special relationship that's been really one of the pleasures of my time as being a director. Thank you and have a wonderful night. From, from, uh, from a colleague who understands what it means to have dedicated that amount of your life to something, boy, do you believe in what you're doing. And I, I wonder how many people really understand the magnitude of that. Uh, but I do, and I, I really, I have such respect for you, you know, I, I don't know quite how to wrap it up, but I think good on you is a pretty good way to say it. David is a brilliant mimic. So laughing, tears running down my face and side splitting as uh, with his incredible imitations of artistic directors, past and present, choreographers he's worked with, guests who've come in to, to the company. A number of us, Richard Evans, Patrick McIntyre and I, we always thought when, when David finishes up with the company, we should send him on the road with a sort of ballet jukebox and people can <laughs> can audience members can request because he can dance anything he can imitate anyone and you know you'd have the David McAllister Roadshow to to keep him and others in in money for years to come he is such a brilliant uh, mimic. David on behalf of the board of the Australian Ballet I'd like to thank you and congratulate you on your extraordinary success uh, you've achieved so much for the ballet and done it in such a, uh, such a wonderful way that we all admire and respect. So I'd just like to wish you and Wesley all the very best for the future and to say thank you. We never gave up, David. We had on stage or main stage galas set for you. We had a one-off galaret, and now we have this online streaming tribute. We could not let COVID-19 stop us offering you a collective, heartfelt thank you. This place has been your home for 38 years. You have been a dancer, an artist, a director, a leader, a choreographer, a mentor, a teacher, a colleague, a friend, but not a very good secret keeper. When I think of David, I think of generosity of spirit, of joy, of love, of selflessness, of community. Kindness, generosity, honesty, and above all, a good human. A huge support to me and my family. Incredibly understanding. Wise beyond belief. Joy, love, warmth, humility. I realise I've got a dear, dear friend who's the ultimate performer, quintessential artist, incredible professional, best partner in the world. Humility, leadership, excitement, trust. Love of trust, of generosity. Humble human, beautiful spirit and generous heart. We love you, David. Dearest David, as you leave this position as our Artistic Director, we want to say thank you for your passion and love for the Australian Ballet and the art form. We want to congratulate you on all your successes. We want to honour you for just being you. And we want to acknowledge you for the leadership and the calmness of your directorship especially during 2020, the year of COVID-19. We love you, we miss you, it's for our love and not goodbye. I first came to Melbourne in 2010 to dance the Nutcracker. He invited me 
as a guest artist and of course he coached me um, in the studio as a dancer and then he opened up the medical team to to let me rehab my injury um, for over a year which was extremely generous and then all of a sudden he's really mentoring me and guiding me and leading me into um, the job that he holds now and the job that I'm about to really take over. He has so much to teach me as um, another David coming into, into the position. Um, and I, I have such respect and, um, and, and love for, for this man that so many people in this building have respect and love for as well. Dear David, D is for disciplined, determined dancer and director. A is for approachable, adaptable, artistic and an ABS alumni. V is for very friendly and very helpful, versed and victorious. I is for intelligent, insightful, impressive and inspiring. And D is for Daisy, delightful and devoted. David, thank you for your love of this art form and thank you for your love and support of the Australian Ballet School over so many years. We all wish you the very best on your new adventures and we look forward to you being back here with us next year where B is for Butterfly. Bye. David, we are so incredibly proud of you and what you've achieved in your career. Now's the time for you to relax sleep in for a change and have the most wonderful life. Absolutely, yeah. Well, I think we're all so proud of you and I think one of the things that really amazes me that you've done so much and achieved so much and yet you're still the same wonderful brother that we grew up with and remember and love. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We just wish you all the best in the world, Dave. Yeah, absolutely. Me, me too, Dave. <laughs> I'm sure that Mother's looking down from heaven with a big smile on her mm -hmm. face and thinking of all the things you'll be able to do. Make cakes and cook food that you don't get Travel. the chance to. Travel. Yeah. That's and the way. sleep. Yay. <laughs> At last, you can sleep. And come home to Perth whenever you want. Ah. Yeah. David, how do we begin to say thank you? Thank you for allowing us to fulfill our dreams. You've made our dreams come true. On behalf of the dancers behind me here, um, the dancers of 2020 and of all the dancers that have been and gone, um, we salute you and we say thank you. You have led us on your journey and your vision of the company with such great warmth, humility and love. Love for us love for the Australian ballet, and just love for ballet. Your love for this profession and this art form is, is mind-blowing, and I'm not sure what, what we'll be without you, but just know that what you've given us is so very special, and we thank you for that, and we love you. Thank you, David. Thank you.